Welcome back to Lua Tutorial 3, where I will introduce you to random numbers and a way to create chained if statements, uh, whereas before we just had individual ifs that checked for something and either did it or skipped over it. Here we'll have a, um, a um, we would say a construct where we can have multiple different possibilities and it's going to select one of them based on several conditions. And then while loops is a way to get repetition. All right, so we're going to work towards a guessing game type of program. So let's start off with random numbers. By the way, this is not necessary, but if you ever want to disable some of your code, you can make what's called a block comment, which starts with two dashes and then two left brackets. And it will go all the way down to where there are two dashes and two right brackets. So what I basically just did here was disable a whole bunch of my code so that when I run this, I don't have to go through all that stuff from before. So in your case, you might want to just make separate projects. But anyway, let's give this a shot. So how do I get a random number? Print. Here is a random number from 1 to 100. So what I'm going to do is go like this. Number. So I'm making another variable. I'm going to say math dot random 100 and then I can just say print the number is dot dot number so dot dot of course is how we chain things together and let's fix that capital H and right. well we don't want that that's a back quote let's try this and see how it works here's a random number from 1 to 100 the number is 85 I was not expecting 85 so that's good let's run it again Wait a minute, 85, what is going on? Let's try it again. I keep getting 85, so it doesn't seem so random. In fact, it's not really random at all. So I'll get the same bunch of numbers if I were to do this five times in a row. Let's see, that's four. I'm going to get those same not really random numbers. So what's happening is Lua uses a formula to generate numbers that look random but they're actually not really random it's based on a formula and as a result we're going to get the same uh, numbers every time so in order to not get the same random numbers every time uh, basically we need to give it a um, a starting seed value this is a little bit technical so you don't need to really understand the details of this but basically based on the operating systems current time every time we run the program that time will be a little different so using that as a random seed is not a bad thing to do at all okay so now let's run this a few times and just confirm so this time I got 87 61 44 12 87 let's see 44 62 4 79 obviously not the same bunch of numbers right okay so that's good news so what we're going to do next is basically give the um, we're going to make a game where the player has to kind of bet as to whether they think the number one two or three is going to come up and if they get it right they'll get ten dollars and if they get it wrong they'll lose five dollars so we're going to need to keep track of how much money they have so we'll say money equals let's say they start with a hundred we're going to say print you have dot dot money for, um, when this runs, it's going to say you have dollar sign and it's going to look up that money and it's going to see that it's a hundred. So it's going to say you have a hundred dollars. And we're going to say print one, two, or three question mark. Okay, this is where we want them to then type in their choice. Um, so I'm going to type choice here. It's going to be io.read a number. And for technical reasons, we do io.read with an L just like that. And we're going to check to see if they got the number right. So let's change this. Instead of a number from the, uh, 1 to 100, let's get a number from 1 to 3. And we're not going to tell them what the number is. At least not yet. So after they've made their choice, now it's safe to tell them. So we're going to say print the number was dot dot. I like to put spaces around the dot dot just so things don't get cluttered. The number was number. 
Okay, so number here is chosen randomly as one, two, or three. Okay, and let's see if they got it right. We want to see if this choice that they chose, that is going to be a number that they typed. If that matches number, then they got it. So if number is equal to choice, then print, you got it. And what we want to do is give them $10. So what happens is their money needs to go up by 10. Now we know that they're starting with 100. So we, you might think, let's just put money equals 110. And that would work at first. But the problem is we're going to eventually get this code to repeat. And at that point, we don't want it to necessarily be 110. They might have already bet a bunch of times and they may have lost money or gained money. So what we're going to do is say that the new value of money is going to be its current value. So money equals money plus 10. So here's $10. So we just took the, that variable money, increased it by 10, and that's what this line here does. Um, now, of course, they might not have got it right. So we're going to say if, whoops, I forgot the end. If number is not equal to choice, notice I used that tilde thing, uh, then I'm going to print, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. So that will be $5. So what do you think this line should look like if they uh, should lose $5 over this? Let you think about that for a moment, and then you can pause it, unpause it if you're not sure yet. But all we need to do it's just say money equals money minus five, end. Okay, so what we have here is a um, one round of this betting game. And what we want to do is have this whole section repeat. So in order to do that, <clears throat> we're going to use a while loop. A while loop basically is, imagine you really wanted to say, repeat this section while, um, their money is greater than zero. Okay, so this is not valid uh, Lua. So in Lua, you don't say repeat this section while, you just say while. So we're going to say while money is greater than zero, do all this code here should happen as long as their money is greater than zero. So when they run out of money, then that's it. Um, so while money is greater than zero, do all this. And just like an if statement, oh, you know what I did? I hit tab there to tab this all over so it's that it's easy to see what the section of code that should be repeated is. Um, so just like an if statement needs the word end at the end, our while loop needs an end at the end. So I'm going to just put end of while loop. Okay. So we're going to run this and see how it works. Ouch, I got an error. Attempt to compare number with nil. Okay, so I'm going to look at the line number here. It looks like it's in line number 94. So what did I do wrong in line 94? Okay, so what happens here is while money is greater than zero, do. So what happened is that I didn't define what money was uh, until line 96. So the Lua... Um, interpreter is seeing this line and it's trying to say money greater than zero. It doesn't know anything about any variable named money. So we need to make sure we put this before the while loop so that way when it gets to this line here, now it'll say, oh yeah, that money, what is it? Currently it's 100 and, and after the first round maybe it's 110 or maybe it's 95 and it will keep going as long as they have not run out of money. So let's just run this now, see if I, all right, so you have $100. One, two, or three. Let's try two. The number was three. You got it wrong. Okay, so I'm down to 95. I'm going to keep playing two until I get it right. So I got it after on my third try, so I'm back at 100. Let's try two again. Okay, so I'm sort of making some money. It's not the most interesting game, but it's something. Okay, so the next and last little thing that I want to introduce in this video is this idea of chaining together an if with an else. So maybe I won't do else if, maybe I'll just do else. So if you look at this, we have 
a condition that if number is equal to choice, we do one thing, and we're checking if that condition was not true, we're doing something else. So the shortcut is to, instead of having to end the first if statement and then start a new one and put the condition and the word then, we can eliminate all that stuff there if we just put an else. So whenever you have an if, you can have a condition, the word then, a bunch of statements that run if this is true, and whatever you want to happen if it came up as false, you would put else and put those statements here, and then this end ends the whole if statement. So let's just run it. You'll see that it works the same way. Three, two, one, two. Okay, so, all right, so that's that. So as the task for this one, so task three, this one's probably the most challenging of the ones we've seen so far. Try to make a rock, paper, scissors program. So here's what you're going to need. Um, use a while loop to repeat the game over and over again. So in order to do that, you can just say while true. If you want something to just run forever, while true do, let's watch what happens when I do this, print, hello, let's end that while loop. So true, it's going to, every time it goes through this while loop, it's going to check to see if this is still true. And obviously, um, if I'm using the word true here, um, Lua interprets that as, as what it sounds like, as true. So it's just going to keep repeating this forever. Let's just see what this looks like. Uh, we're not really going to see it because I'd have to run out of money. Let's start my money at 10 and see if I can run out of money. And then I'll get down here. I'm not running out of money. Good grief. Okay, I'm almost out of money here. And I just ran out. And it's printing hello like crazy. Okay. So anytime you have a section that you want to just run forever, like if we change this to while true, it would keep going even if their money ran into the negatives. So we want to say if while money greater than zero, do all this code here. All right. So you're going to what use a while loop to repeat the game over and over again. Uh, use math.random3 to choose one, two, or three randomly. So you're going to have one equals rock, two equals scissors, three equals paper, or you can do it, probably it's better to do it this way. Okay, have them choose one, two, or three, and then determine who won. Okay, so the way rock, paper, scissors work is that rock beats uh, scissors, scissors beats Paper, paper, beats rock. Um, and you can also keep track of how many times they want. So that will be similar to what we did here with money. So you would probably start off with the win count, like how many times they've won, or you could just say wins. Wins equals zero, and whenever they actually win, you would say wins equals wins plus one. Right? So that's going to bump up that win count by one. All right, so give that a shot. That's a little bit of a challenge, and maybe I'll go over that in my next video. All right, thanks for tuning in, folks. Take care, and until next time, adios.